Hello everyone. In this video, I have covered a very interesting poem, An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum by well-known English poet Stephen Spender. As a poet, Stephen was sensitively alive to the contemporary social and political problems and his poetry reflects his awareness of the wild world lying outside the precincts of his individual self. In this video, I will be discussing about the author, mind map, theme, an explanation of the poem along with the word meanings and poetic devices used. Sir Stephen Harold Spender was born in London. He was an English poet, novelist and essayist whose work concentrated on themes of social injustice and the class struggle. He declared himself to be socialist and pacifist. He was appointed Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the United States Library of Congress in 1965. Spender's books of poetry include 20 poems, The Still Center, Poems of Dedication and The Generous Days. World Within World, Stephen Spender's autobiography is recognized as one of the most illuminating literary autobiographies to come out of the 1930s and 1940s. He was knighted in 1983. Children, let me elaborate the title of the poem, An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum. Poet has used indefinite article, an elementary. He's not talking about any particular school, but one of many. So elementary school classroom in a slum would look quite the same, whether it is in Simapuri in Delhi or in Chennai, Dharavi in Mumbai, or be it in Manila or Mexico or any other part of the world, slum classroom would look the same. Poet has used the word slum, which clearly indicates its urban landscape. And what is slum? Slum is an area which is highly populated and inhabitants live in incomplete or overcrowded homes. It is a kind of shanty town and in unsafe and unhealthy environment. And these impoverished people have limited or no access to basic amenities. Stephen Spender, along with W. H. Auden and Cecil Day Lewis, pioneered the poetic movement of 1930s. Through his powerful writings, both in prose and verse, he established himself as the prominent poet of the modern age. Scarred by the storms and the stresses of the post World War, Stephen's poetry is partly an expression of that intense search for harmony and synthesis between the apparently warring claims of a visionary and a man of action. The poem is written in a simple and lucid style which is dominated by the use of similes, metaphors and imagery. Spender's use of rhyme is remarkable as in the poem he has done away with the regular rhyme in order to convey the effect of social disorder, confusion and chaos characterized by poverty, unemployment and hardship of the hungry multitude whose lot has aroused his feelings of sympathy, disgust and anger. Let's focus on the theme now. The poem written by Stephen Spender describes the social inequalities which are prevailing in the society and calls for a holistic education for poor slum children. In the poem, he describes the condition of the students of an elementary school which is situated in a slum area. The poet wants to draw attention of everyone towards these children so that their life can be improved. The poet believes that the only solution to help these children is by providing an education that is empowering in the true sense. This is possible only when the haves realize their duty towards the have-nots and provide them equal opportunities to lead dignified lives. The poem very aptly summarizes Spender's philosophy of life, which is based on the themes of social injustice and class inequalities. He exposes the sham that exists in the society today and hollowness in the intentions of people who want to do good to the underprivileged by donating gifts which are in effect of no use to them. 
living in an age of social unrest and economic bankruptcy he highlights the harsh realities of life as experienced by the slum children with the gulf between the haves and have nots increasing at an unimaginable pace the children in the slums are deprived of their basic right to education their eyes dream of a better future which is distant and beyond their reach i'm going to explain the poem in detail line by line students let's see what stephen spender is trying to convey through these beautiful lines i will read the stanza first far far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones reciting father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this so students first stanza lucidly brings forth the miserable condition of the children studying in the slum classroom In the first stanza the poet Stephen Spender describes the pathetic and miserable condition of the children sitting in a classroom in a slum the poet has started his poem with a repetition of the words far far from gusty waves by repeating these words he want to stress how far in reality is their life from beauties and bounties of nature how far they are from the activities and jubilations of life children we know that these children are malnourished they are underprivileged they look lifeless and helpless their hair scattered untidily around their pale malnourished faces they are surrounded by squalor filth poverty and apathy of people they have no time and no money to take care of themselves unlike other school children who are usually energetic and full of life these children seem withered exhausted shabby and lifeless now we need to focus on the word rootless weeds over here and what are weeds weeds are unwanted plants that we take out from the garden the children of the slum are also unwanted in society just as weeds are unwanted in a garden rootless also means children who live in the slum are actually rootless they have come from different places looking for better life and as we know have become partners in survival with their parents let's focus on the poetic devices used in the first two lines we know that these slum children are neglected and poverty stricken their faces show no energy and this is contrasted with reference to gusty waves and gusty waves we know symbolize energy and vigor something that is lacking in the faces of these slum children stephen spender has used repetition and alliteration in the very first line repetition of words far far emphasizes the separation or division between the worlds of haves and have nots it highlights the gap between the rich and the poor it's alliteration also and what is alliteration it is a literary device in which a series of words start with the same consonant sound to create a rhythmic repetition so here consonant f sound is repeated in three neighboring words far far from the poet has used simile in the second line like rootless weeds which clearly indicate that they are unwanted like weeds they don't belong anywhere they are uncombed here fall on their pale faces which emphasize their poverty and neglected appearance the tall girl with her weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes a tall girl stands with her bowed down head far from being lively and energetic she is perhaps physically and mentally exhausted she stands with her head weighed down children why do you think her head is weighed down 
possibly due to the burden of poverty she lacks confidence she has low self esteem the girl is definitely not happy this tall girl can't even put her head up because of the atrocities of the poverty another sharp image is that of a paper seeming boy with rat's eyes a brilliant metaphor is used by stephen spender to describe the unfortunate child who is so weak that he looks as thin as paper he is so thin perhaps he had no food no meal for days he is totally malnourished and famished children the metaphor of the rat size provides an indication of starvation and also highlights the desperate search for food contentment and security the boy is weak and timid his hungry eyes like of a rat are searching for food and security in life the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones reciting a father's nal disease his lesson from his desk we come across another boy who has stunted growth and stunted means not properly developed he is referred as unlucky heir students how ironical it is as you know heir is one who inherits money lots of property and wealth but this poor boy is unlucky heir why he is being referred as unlucky heir because his inheritance from his father is his disease pain and poverty his unfortunate heir to the deformed twisted body he is struggling hard with his deformities to recite his lesson due to which he cannot stand and has to remain seated while reciting the lesson at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream or squirrel's game in tree room other than this there's one sweet child at the back of the dim lit class who would rather be out and play games with the squirrels in the tree than go through the drudgery of this class where knowledge imparted to them is superficial to which they cannot relate to dreams seem to be alive in his eyes his eyes have that spark of dreams to be part of that world outside the classroom he dreams of squirrels playing games in the hollow of the tree his dreams are of the places other than this repulsive classroom he is lost in his imagination creating his own fantasy world where he plays like a squirrel in his tree room he is not interested in the monotonous environment of the classroom children this boy is a symbol of hope who despite the abject poverty hopelessness and pathetic condition of his class does dare to dream and every great dream begins with a dreamer history is created by those who dare to dream in the words of william shakespeare hold fast to dreams for if dreams die life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly on saw cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belt flurry trolley's valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all their futures painted with a fog a narrow street sealed with a lit sky far far from rivers capes and stars of words in the second stanza spender describes the classroom the poet talks about how the classroom has been decorated just as in the case of the students it is neglected too the classroom of the elementary school has not been maintained properly stanza begins with the words on sour cream walls children why are the walls being called sour cream sour cream brings to our mind cream color light yellow in color not the color associated with newly painted walls it is sour cream and it reflects the neglect the ignorance or insensitivity of the people managing the school sour suggests a color that is dull decaying and depressing 
some rich person or politician has donated money to start this slum school and thereafter has not bothered to check the condition in the school the pale cream walls which must have been painted long ago with donated money create a morbid atmosphere children what else is in the classroom the room is filled with donations the walls of the classroom are mounted with a shakespeare's bust an open handed map and a painting of the beautiful trowley's valley things to which children cannot relate to shakespeare's head or a good literature may raise desire which can never be fulfilled trowley's valley suggests natural beauty which is out of reach of these slum children the pictures are all donations which represent a world that the slum children are deprived of the poet hints at two worlds the world of poverty and disease contrasted with the progressive world represented in the pictures on the walls william shakespeare is widely regarded as the world's greatest poet writer in the english literature children if we look at the shakespearean plays we have characters from upper strata of society they are rich they are well to do prince knights and kings the metaphor of shakespeare's head represents the teaching of concepts and ideas that the students are not able to relate to because of their impoverished state and it is ironical that the literary master's portrait housed in a classroom where no serious teaching takes place children are poor balnarish tired and hopeless they don't have the luxury of leisure to study works by shakespeare the entire atmosphere in the school is one of inactivity and morbidity which contrast with the cloudless sky at dawn and the concrete domes which override the city so poet is trying to say that with so much of depravity shakespeare and literature have no place in their lives children the images cloudless at dawn and civilized dome highlight monotonous and dull life in urban slum the elementary school is squeezed and suppressed under so much concrete structures that the children are unaware of the beauty of sky at the dawn belt flari trioli's valley children there is also a picture of a beautiful trioli's valley full of fragrant flowers which indicates beauty and hope with its bells and colorful flowers representing the world that celebrates civilization progress and heavenly splendor but these slum children pass much of their time raking in garbage and slag they will never be able to enjoy or experience beauty of mountains and fragrance of flowers they are condemned to live in the slum open handed map awarding the world its world there's also a world map hung on the wall which represents the world of rich and elite with all its bounties in this map these children can see all the big cities of the world but for them their world is the slum and nowhere can they locate or identify a slum on the map this is the version of world provided to them however this version of the world so provided awarding the world its world doesn't match the actual world they live in this map instead of making them feel part of the world further alienates them the world map on the wall only enhances their pain their world is narrow and stuck in the boundaries of poverty and misery children their hopes for a better world may just never be fulfilled and yet for these children these windows not this map their world poet says the map doesn't provide an honest portrayal of the real world to these slum children the honest portrayal is instead presented by the windows of the classroom through which the children can view the day to day hardship they have to endure and the pathetic conditions they live in what they can relate to therefore is not what is shown on the map but rather the world of poverty and misery that they can see through the windows of their classroom where all their futures painted with a fog a narrow street sealed in with the lead sky 
the slum children have a bleak future beyond the classroom and the window opens to the view of a place where all their future is painted with fog this is in sharp contrast to the beautiful tyrolese painting donated to the classroom what they see from their classroom window is their world and nowhere in this world map they see a slum children fog symbolizes something which is unclear dull and lack clarity the future of these children is also uncertain bleak and foggy the narrow streets seem to represent the narrow prospects the children have and the lead sky sky which is black signify the limits beyond which the children will never be able to move the world of the slum children is dark misty and their future is bleak it is confined within the narrow dusty streets and sealed with the dull gray sky where dirt filth and disease reign supreme a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky and children lead sky symbolizes pollution and the burden of the industrial world it also represents a gray and dull existence which comprises the life of the slum children far far from rivers capes and stars of words poet once again uses the word far far from an alliteration to emphasize how far these children are from the stars of words they have never seen the stars as their sky has been covered with dark lead sky they have never seen beautiful rivers capes or stars in their life the expression star of words is yet another example of the metaphor where words are compared to stars a world denied to the children the world of literature a world of free thought the poet repeats the word far in the first line of the first stanza and the last line of the second stanza in order to stress the fact that these children are cut off from the rest of the world they are living in a self contained world apparently this is why the poet urges people who matter to break down the barriers that separate these children from the rest of the world they are far away from rivers seas that resemble adventure excitement and beauty as well as from the stars that symbolize wisdom knowledge that can brighten their future surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night on this slag heap these children with skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones all of their time and space are foggy slum so blot their maps with slums as big as doom In the third stanza the tone of the poem changes from the despair to rebellion Shakespeare the epitome of culture and knowledge is said to be wicked and the map is dubbed as a bad example Children why Shakespeare is considered to be wicked According to the poet he is wicked because it describes a world of kings and noblemen which the children of the slums aspire for but can never reach he is exposing these underprivileged children to a world which is beyond their reach the innocent poor children who read about love affection friendship do not realize they do not understand that these things are beyond their reach but after reading about them they are tempted to be part of that world world of rich and elite the world with its beauties and bounties so the map mounted on the wall is unreal as it gives them the glimpses of the beautiful world out there but the world of these poor children is confined to the narrow streets of the slums with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal the picture of beautiful world with its offerings like the ships the sun and tender emotion of love only tempt them to steal the vulnerable children are misled with sights of a world which they might never be able to achieve or to live
poet says moreover by providing them a glimpse of the unattainable tempt the children to resort to the ways that might incite them to commit crimes hence shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example as their exclusiveness tempts them to steal it is ironical that by teaching them about shakespeare poet says actually you are in fact teaching them to steal for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes the lives of the slum children cunningly turn and twist in their cramped holes they spend their entire life striving and struggling for their existence in small dirty rooms where life seems to slither and slog children their homes are tiny and small like graves they are overcrowded they are cramped they slightly turn and twist around they live in humiliation in shame nobody nobody in this world is aware that they even exist many of them even die without getting out of these cramped holes so the poet says it is not only irresponsible but also an immoral to paint pretty pictures of a perfect place to children who live in suffocating hovels who move from one endless night to another without any dawn of hope from fog to endless night the expression describes the miserable and pathetic lives of the slum children the foggy mornings till late at night these children make desperate attempts to live their life despite misery hopelessness and suffering from beginning of their life till they die these children live in most pathetic and atrocious conditions on their slag heap these children slag heap refers to a large pile of waste material this dirt and garbage is the world for the slum children who spend their life raking in these slag heaps searching the garbage for leftovers or discarded things so that they can utilize it from fog to endless night children the poet has used alliteration to emphasize their miserable condition and uncertain future fog symbolizes something which is unclear dull the future of these children is uncertain bleak and foggy the slum children struggle from morning to night merely to exist it also means that they struggle from the beginning of their life to their death that is their life is one endless struggle in darkness on their slag heap poet has used metaphor over here these children sit on the slag heap and slag heap is nothing but garbage thrown by the factories children notice the possessive pronoun used before the slag heap on their slag heap the whole environment is described as slag heap poet says that their childhood gets wasted on the heaps of slag and garbage these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with bended glass like bottle bits on stones children poet has used very strong image over here it's quite hard hitting image we are forced to think of children who have not eaten for days they are famished they are reduced to skin and bones the children are so malnourished that they appear to be wearing skins the poet has used the poetic device metaphor over here a direct comparison is made between skin and clothes they look more like skeletons their bones peeping out of their thin skin cover clearly it is food that they need before education the state of poverty is intensified by the fact that the glasses which these children wear are cracked and look like broken pieces of a bottle they have mended it to be used glasses of these spectacles are like bottle hit on the stone they are broken into bits perhaps they have picked up spectacles of steel from the garbage thrown by rich person the poet has again used metaphor spectacles of steel on the face of it the expression seems to suggest that some slum children are wearing spectacles made of steel and having shattered or chipped glass however more plausible explanation can be that the thin and skeletal bodies of the slum children look more like framework of steel just like that of a pair of spectacles
Children, Stephen Spender has also used simile over here, like bottle bits on stones. It describes the lenses in their spectacles which are broken. Likewise, their hopes, aspirations and lives also lie shattered and neglected. Their entire appearance reflects their misery and deprivation. All of their time and space are foggy slum, so blot their maps with slums as big as doom. The children spend their time in these foggy slums, which comprise their real world. The maps displayed in their classroom are not the reality for them. It is ironical that the children cannot locate their slum on the map, although it is their world. Spender is really angry and infuriated over here. Perhaps lack of compassion shown by halves and says, let us blot their maps with slums as big as doom. He wants this map to be blot with as many as slums so that these children don't feel alienated. At least let these poor children of the slum feel that they belong to some part of this world. The poet shows his resentment by suggesting that the maps on the classroom walls should show the reality of their life. It must show the huge slums instead of beautiful scenic graphics. Unless governor, inspector, visitor, this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs Break or oh break, open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books, the white and green leaves open. History is theirs whose language is the sun. The final stanza of the poem is a passionate appeal to change the conditions of these children. The poet tries to appeal to the teachers, governor, inspector and visitors to become aware and sensitive to these slum dwellers and do something to improve the conditions of these deprived children. The poet wants the civilized world to bridge the gap between them and the world of these children. He wants to bridge the gap between the haves and have-nots. They should offer these children a glimpse of a better world so that the map become their window to the beautiful world outside. The poet hopes that bureaucrats and authorities understand their moral responsibilities and free these deprived ones from traps of their graves. Until then, the poet asks the authorities to help the children learn from nature and nurture their childhood. Children, Stephen Spender has used beautiful simile over here. Look at the comparison like catacombs. And what are catacombs? Catacombs are a series of underground tunnels used for burying dead people. So he's trying to say is that the slum children, they live in dark and dingy rooms which resemble cemeteries. And the windows of these rooms look like the lids of catacombs. Unless and until this governor or these rich people do something, their environment will become their graves. Break or oh break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books, the white and green leaves open. These are the images that portray a world without boundaries in contrast to their gloomy, sad and confined world. Stephen Spender would like these children to bask in the vastness of this world. He says that expose them to the green fields and let them run carefree on the golden sands for the world of the children should not be confined within the slum walls. Children note the repetition of the word break. This is poet's call for them to break free from the social injustice. Repetition of word break symbolize break from social discrimination from morbid atmosphere through education. The windows which confine the children need to be broken and children must have an access to green fields, the open sky and all the wonders of nature. Children, why beautiful green fields? Because nature has always been our first teacher.
the poet wants all the barriers that keep them away from achieving the true education to be broken down they should be given an opportunity to come out of their narrow and shabby lanes and extend to the blue sky and waves rising over the golden sands the poet uses a brilliant imagery to describe the blue sky and the open space the children should at least be provided with the children must be given the freedom to experience the wholesome bounties of nature these deprived children must be taught to express themselves freely the poet desires that these children should be allowed to run freely on the gold sands under a clear blue sky that is they should make progress in life and children what kind of progress he is talking about there is need to change their material conditions through economic upliftment symbolized by the gold sands making the world of miseries full of pleasures let them learn from nature let them run their tongue naked in books the white leaves children here refer to textbooks we read in the classroom which increase our knowledge and green leaves refer to knowledge that we get from nature or from our environment poet says give them hunger for knowledge only when this happens the children will be able to think on their own they will be able to break free from the web of poverty they will be able to break free from the shackles of slum and then they will reclaim their lives and will rewrite their own destiny the poet ends the poem on a very positive and optimistic note he says history will then be written by these very children who speak in the language of sun history theirs whose language is the sun and this line gives solution to the problem also it indicates that only those who are well educated only those who are well read have the power to recreate their destiny the poet makes appeal to everyone that let's educate them so well that these underprivileged children have power to recreate rewrite their destiny so that they are able to get out of this trap or web of poverty and create beautiful world for themselves the sun incidentally is a metaphor for freedom as opposed to the fog Stephen Spender makes it clear that history can be written only by those whose language is the sun. It is clear that the message that Spender wants to pass on to the reader is that the fruits of education can be enjoyed only by those who are free from the shackles of poverty. A hard hitting point, but then what Spender seeks to express is the idea that policy makers should target the poverty of the children before attempting to provide them with education. Ending the poem on positive note, Stephen Spender feels that people who are ignited by the fire of knowledge and learning are those who create history. he would like opportunities to be made available to the children so that no childhood gets lost in the gloomy darkness of ignorance in the slums i hope children you have enjoyed and understood the poem thank you for watching don't forget to give your valuable comments like share and subscribe english tutorials by poonam thakur